the stage set for the first semi-final and Dennis Carroll, the Swans captain, is at full forward. Umpire Howlett to set the game in motion. The time clock is rolling and the first semi is underway with a bounce which favours Ironmonger. A mighty backhander and the Swans draw first blood. Holding the man, Swans free kick. And a round of booing from the pro Melbourne crowd. Morewood towards Carroll, his captain. Hughes with the big fist on the ball. Coleman overrunning it. Murphy back in the side after being sidelined with injury for a long period. Melbourne under pressure. Coop, well met by Wright, and the Swans keep the ball deep in attack. It's going to be a great battle too, Kevin, for those two. And Bayes gets a tap there. Free kick uh, in that throw, and it's going to O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer keeping the ball to the wing. Wilson, the waiting at the back of the pack. It's marked by Bailey. He's playing well. Newport. It's Newport. Steve Newport. Melbourne to attack. Here's Dean. You get a 15-metre penalty there for some uh, over-exuberance. And now he kicks the football to the forward pocket. At the back of the pack, oh, the Swans in front, men. they're in numbers at this stage. Jackson, oh, this looks dangerous. Yates, the handball, quickly. Wilson! It's the first goal of the match from the boot of Wilson. The proud man he is as the rain starts to pour down in this first quarter. The Demons have the score on the board, seven points. The Swans yet to get off the mark. Well, we see here where Ricky Jackson, using that pace, able to really gather that crumb and go short. We see the ball well picked up there and hand passed by Yates across to Wilson. And standing some 25 metres away was Greg Williams. And we saw last week when he played on Bacanara that when he went deep into the forward line that uh, he didn't pick him up quickly enough. And Bacanara kicked five goals. Now Wilson, the centre man, has kicked the opening goal. And here go the Demons again, deep into attack. Big scoring chance for them. Carter with the big fist. And a throw in in Melbourne's forward pocket. They lead seven to nothing. Viney, the man banging them forward out of the centre. Recruit from South Australia. And a man who has beaten Boris Becker on the tennis court. Holden having to kick in a hurry and it could land anywhere. O'Dwyer in front, made a mess of it. Fights on. Now stretch. Support from Yates. Well done to full forward. Swan defence in good shape there. Williams for Melbourne. Throw in the call from the field umpire. But Melbourne deep in attack and there's a sense of momentum about them again which is going to take some stopping. And Henwood showing a lot of power uh, as he ran player and ball over the line there, playing for the Swans. Line Munger not doing too well on the ruck. Oh, good play there by uh, Cordy. Steins, the jam up. Barry Mitchell, can he get them out of trouble? Here's the diesel. Williams, sidestep, gets the handball up. Henwood gets it, kicks it to the centre. It's just marked. Gerard Healy, the Swans have got their running game going now. Henwood, the kick. The lead, man in front, save it, it was a good one too, it's falling, top man. He's a top player, been outstanding for Melbourne this year since coming from Western Australia. Poor kick though and Bolton in front. 15 metres against O'Dwyer, back after suspension, but already a bit of rough stuff. Now Williams, bearing down stretch. Play on, stretch. O'Dwyer off the ground. Healy in a hurry to half forward. Mark Payne, Murphy. He can kick from 50 metres out. And so this represents the Swans' big opportunity for their first score. David Murphy, after an ankle injury which sidelined him for about five weeks, is finally back. And a more welcome addition for the Swans you couldn't imagine. Hooks it. Misses, scores are behind, which puts Sydney on the board, but they trail by six points after ten minutes.
And already Jared Healy has proved to be a pretty good player for the Sydney Swans. Uh, he's had a stress fracture of the foot and Bailey has the job of tagging him. He's very successful last week on Larkin. But the informed Jared Healy is the best ruck rover in Australia. And here's Williams with a chance and the loose man running in the pocket is Hawke. Danny Hughes backed himself, got the ball, kicked it, didn't have it. A nice tunnel ball out, they get out of trouble well. And marked is Ian Roberts. A remarkable comeback by this man. Healy, Healy again. An army of players, all that was almost a mark to white. That man was green held, it was Murphy. The Demons tagging strongly, giving it their best shot. Wilson has kicked the only goal on the match. Iron Munger looked very slow. Ricky Jackson. Bailey took his eyes off it. Here go the Swans through Bolton. Across to Roberts. Up in the air on its Danny Hughes by himself. Can Coleman get there? Can Coleman get a boot to it? It toes all that's needed. He did. Stevie Wright. Stevie Wright's a man who's kicked the goal. He was quicker than Coleman. Let's look at it again. Actually, Coleman should have got a free kick here, although the umpire was behind the play and probably didn't see it, but he was being held there by Danny Hughes. You can see him over the shoulder also being held, but we'll see the quick boot here. Coleman. Coleman. <laughs> well, through the binoculars, I, I reckon that it was Stevie Wright had actually got his boot there. I think his boot might have been a, a little bit uh, hidden then by Coleman, but uh, I'm pretty certain that Stevie Wright will claim he kicked it like all good rovers should. <laughs> 12 minutes gone and scores are level. Greg Healy, the fist on the ball, helped on by Viney. 34 is Newport for Melbourne. One of those awkwardly bouncing ones that just won't come up for you. He finally wins it to half forward. Dean down. Henwood now for the Swans, puts them into attack. White in front and from behind Spalding. With great authority, his second fine mark already. And kicks the ball to the centre where Melbourne are well placed. Wilson runs onto it beautifully. Well played Bolton to hold him up. Gives away 15 metres, but quite intentionally. And in fact, I think um, umpire Cameron gives about 30. As Wilson takes his third kick towards Dean. Didn't quite hold it on the way down. Oh, deliberately knocked to the line, and that's a free kick. Stupid play by Henwood, who really had more time and space than he realised, and didn't need to do that. But uh, he's been penalised for deliberately knocking it out. And now Melbourne deep in attack with the scoring chance. Jackson, Flower. Williams off the ground with a Melbourne free kick to Flower. High tackle, says umpire Cameron. And the champion, the captain, will line them up from 35 metres out. On a difficult angle, but his skills are so great that you would give him a chance from anywhere. Well, I certainly go along there. I'll give him a chance, Tim. And if he kicks this, the place will be in uproar. He hasn't kicked, but he's missed it badly. Just scores a behind. Melbourne second, enough to give them the lead by one point after 13 and a half minutes in drizzling rain. It's one of those typical Melbourne days where one minute the sun's shining and the sky is clear, and the next minute it's raining. And a kick out, a kick back into play. Cordy had it, dropped it. It's a tackle, a high tackle. He'll take the free kick. And a half back flank. A short distance away is uh, Holden. Well, Tom Hafey... Out on the full. Shocking. Well, Tom Hafey would be very annoyed with that because he likes his players to kick the ball long, and particularly on drizzling, uh, wet days where the margin of error is so slight. Stretch kicks to half forward. And Dean read it beautifully. He was always in better position. He wasn't in front, which is where forwards are normally meant to be, but he had all the judgment as Ironmonger ran under it. Henwood wasn't well placed. And between them, Dean took the mark and could kick a goal from inside 50 metres. It's long, it's high, but it's not so handsome. And the Demons get their second behind in a minute to lead by two points. Robbie Flowers kicked uh, two behinds from his shot. He's right cut to put the ball back into play. Oh, it's not a very good kick. Williams, a bit short to try and take on Wilson. Wilson breaks away. A bad kick, but Flowers got it. Can he kick another one? Good judgment by Roberts with the Swans. A long knock across here to Holden. The bounce favoured him as well. He has two runners down the field, but Williams looks a bit slow. He was held on to it. He'll get the free kick. Wilson was a man who tagged him. 
Wilson doing pretty well for the Demons. Williams kicking to the man on the mark. It's gone across the line. It's not another kick for uh, for Williams. It'll be a throw-in. Brownlow medalists both. And what a tussle it could be. Wilson the more brilliant. Williams superbly constructed, a consummate team player. Well done, Jackson, who's starring early. Beautiful hand pass to Flower. Third opportunity, but again he misses. Well, that was a poor miss there by Robbie Flower. He's kicked three behinds in this opening quarter, and we mentioned if he had have kicked a goal from those three opportunities, the lid of the MCG would have been lifted off and would have given uh, Melbourne a tremendous amount of confidence. But uh, Cordy obviously has his hands full on the champion. Carter gets another big roost in. Oh, O'Dwyer's a couple of weeks out and has taken away his judgment. Williams, beautiful handball to Bays. Not so good here to, to hit him more. Oh, and running well is Stevie Wright. Can he kick his second? It's there. Well played, Swans. Made the most of their opportunities as they came out of the fence. Well, that was a great piece of play, and that was the link style of football that we've, we've come to know on the Sydney cricket ground with Bays with that quick hand pass to Murphy. And look at that slick one across the moor. And Stevie Wright, who has been in really good goal kicking form over the last six or seven weeks, he booted eight in one game, six in another on the Sydney cricket ground in those record breaking scores. And he's popped through his second goal. We think it's his second. There was a bit of controversy between the first one between Coleman and Stevie, but we'll give it to Stevie Wright. The Swans in front for the first time. Newport for Melbourne. Well pressured, but it works for the Demons anyway. Yates from the wing. Has a look and sees Williams leading. Kicks just too far, and Williams couldn't put the brakes on in the slippery conditions. The ground's soft, not really wet, although the surface after a few showers, a little slippery. 17 and a half minutes down. The Swans with three scoring shots ahead of Melbourne, who have had five. They've wasted a number of opportunities. They've had more of the ball, they've looked better, but they haven't converted. Ironmonger and Viney tangling. The normally classic John Ironmonger showing a bit of aggression. Mark Browning having a few words to say about the status of the uh, game at the moment in this first quarter. Stein, a good ruckman. Jackson again. Has a quick look and a shot and it's pretty close. Oh, Flowers there again. Flowers kicked it. After four goes, Robbie Flowers kicked his first goal and listen to that crowd. Melbourne and others love him. Well, let's have a look at Big Steins, who's done very well in the ruck, and so is this little fella, Ricky Jackson. This was a great kick. Up high from behind, we saw Flower couldn't take it, but the ball just dropped down nicely to get that left boot there, and maybe Tom Hafey will have to give some thought at this stage to uh, Neil Cordy, because that move hasn't been successful so far, with Flower really starring on that forward line. Spalding, semi-smothered. Well done, stretch though for Melbourne, gives them a chance. Yates didn't mean to kick that off the ground and lost control of it, but wins it back. Well done. Newport, dispossessed. Williams loves the tough stuff, but that wasn't so hot. Bailey for Melbourne, the half forward. Free kick, no, Mark Payne. I thought it might have been a free kick, and the crowd thought so too. Hand pass off to Tui. But it was well played by Neil Cordy, who deserves a lot of credit for a big fight back. Love it. But it's not coming easily to either team at the moment. Too much pressure on for that. Bays, a natural left footer. Beyond half forward, and Hughes goes for the sanctuary of the line. Quite deliberately, and he too is penalised. It's a second one for that, Tim. Uh, one against each side, and there's, there's a message there, all right, from the umpires. And the free kick goes to Dennis Carroll. Carrying enormous responsibility, having lined up at full forward. Normally plays at centre half back. He's been down on form. Had a bad day against Hawthorne in the qualifying final. On the tightest of angles. Could barely see daylight between the sticks. Kicks beautifully. What a goal. That oh. is a great goal by the captain. There's an old story about one from that tight an angle where the ball gets stuck between the goalposts, and that one might well have done, but Dennis Carroll has kicked the Swans third and put them in front by five points. And as the second term gets underway, here's Jeff Leake. And big Jim Steins is off the field, and O'Dwyer back on for the Demons, and they got the first touch, and the Demons kicking to the left. Bays had it, and then lost it. 
high tackle here uh, on Spalding, and he has a man out. Uh, it was Dean, and also Flower. Flower and Cordy, good battle going on there with Flower with one goal three. Todd Viney chips it out. Yates as well, number eight for the Demons. Viney again. The Swans cluster around. They clear the ball well, and here's the runner. And Williams playing well, again in possession. Two of his teammates downfield, or oh, Barry Mitchell unlucky there. O'Dwyer on the line. Quick kick by Healy. Into the pocket. A mark. <laughs> they play on in any case. Here's a go by Roberts chasing out. Oh, dangerous here as uh, Jackson gets a handball. Running through is uh, Yates. Allegedly kicked for goal and he's got it. And the Demons lead. They're leading by a point. Just one minute into this second term. Well, a great opening for the Melbourne side. Uh, we saw against North Melbourne that uh, at the start of most quarters they were able to come out and really fire up and play well. Here's Ricky Jackson again, who must be vying for uh, nearly best man on the ground. And Yates down from the wing. Uh, Bolton has the job of playing on, on Yates today. But uh, Yates, a former back pocket player who has made the transition to a wingman, certainly has had a marvellous season. Ironmonger and O'Dwyer, Viney the scout, isn't he robust? And he can kick. And he really puts the crowd on fire as he puts Melbourne in front by a goal. Approaching the eight minute mark of the second quarter and that was a great solo effort. And the former Sturt player, noted for his strong tackling for the Melbourne side. And I was pleased to see young O'Dwyer, only a, a youngster as far as ruck work is concerned, fighting really hard for that front position at that boundary throw in there to enable the ball to come to the front of the pack. And listen to the Melbourne crowd now, starting to put on their chant that they've held back for some 23 years. Ryan <laughs> Munger Vito driver, though. Ryan gets back into it. Here's Bolton. He won't get caught this time, the racehorse. Left boot at the full forward. Too long for Carroll, just right for Hughes. And the fullback heads off to the, uh, the right side of the ground. Great kick. Good kick as he finds Yates on the half-back line, but... Not too many people near him, and he goes for a 30-metre handball. It's a dreadful one, and Cordy says, thank you. Puts the Swans back into attack. Bailey had it and lost it. Love it. Spalding. Back to Bailey. Doing it easily. O'Dwyer in the centre of the field now. Dreadful kick. Everyone moves into it. And a mark. It's a mark to young... Uh, uh, to uh, Dean, it is. And I reckon he can kick it from here. He's a long kicker of the football. Well, he's a thumping kick, in fact, yeah. Jeff, and uh, I think he could make the distance. See if you're right, Kevin. He lets it go. It's a drop short right in the teeth of goal. Off the hands, through for behind. Kicked it so hard, he might have hurt himself. How <laughs> hard you have to kick it to hurt yourself? <laughs> Seven points in Melbourne's favour. Tilly makes good position for Carter's kick in. Goes to space on the wing. Two against one in the Swans' favour, but Spalding wins brilliantly. Jackson, Melbourne men everywhere. Eichold, stretch looking for it inside and getting it. 60 metres out. He unloads. Very long. Dean again. Cordy. Nowhere else to go. The crowd hooting, that's because they wanted him to try and come out of there and do something aggressive. He knew better. They won't be calling for deliberately putting it through from behind, will they? They'll free kick him. <laughs> 31 to 23. The Demons getting away in the second quarter at the 10 minute mark. And here's Rod Carter. Heads off to the right and brings it back to the left. Mark by Eichel. Push in the back, Melbourne free kick. They won't mind this, it'll be Stephen Stretch, the man looking after Bays on the wing. A long, low one. Didn't go hit the tail. What a great mark. Love it. I think no, it's, 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 sorry. Viney, it's I think. Todd Viney, yes. Very strong mark. Well, you've got to mark him pretty strong if you're playing on a an All-Australian, which is Craig Holden is, the former Western Australian, picking up uh, the Ruck Rovers on the half-back flank in, in Bailey and Viney. Melbourne leading by eight points at this point in time. And a very positive, deliberate and straight kick 
It's a goal. Well, this is a terrific mark under the conditions. You caught it well there, Jeff, where you see in front, not electing to take it on his chest like a lot of young players would do. But have a look at the outstretched arms here of Todd Bonney, and you need a really strong grip to take that mark. And what a great kick. And he has really lifted the Demon supporters. And there's no doubt that uh, there's a huge crowd here. I'd say a good 75,000. And they're all supporting, I think, except for a few, the Melbourne football team. And a terrific solo effort by Viney. Two goals in three minutes. The first one, an outstanding solo performance. And the second one, likewise, coming from a great mark. And it's given them the biggest break so far. Williams to Bolton. Pressure from Lovett, but Bolton rises to it. To full forward, but in the path is Sean White, who has become a cult figure at Melbourne. In only 31 games, he's just about the favourite. Flowers still holds that honour, but White's about second. Fumble by uh, Bailey. Healy. Bailey again from the centre. Eichold. Melbourne starting to look dangerous. Flower now, 40 metres out. Goals! Second goal to the skipper. Melbourne's fourth in 12 and a half minutes in this quarter. And as they did last week when they ripped the heart out of North Melbourne in the second term, they are turning on the heat in the second quarter of the big game. Well, Eichold, number 25, a former amateur star, getting the ball across there to Robert Flower, who's now booted two goals, three, and they've got the adrenaline flowing now, the Melbourne side, and they're running in numbers, and they're really going in hard for the ball. Now, can the Swans answer the challenge? And the Demons lead by 20 points into attack once more. There's Roberts for the Swans. Charged after it again. Well, good play, Bailey, strong. Ricky Jackson, the pass a bit long there for uh, for Williams. But for the Demons, they have the football back in their forward line. And it's been a big four goal second quarter in 13 minutes for the Dees. Crisis time for the Swans. 20 points down, 13 minutes into the turn. And for Northy, a chance to really start driving home the nails. 4-3 to 2 behinds in the quarter. Roberts, pressured. Another throw in in the same spot. 20 metres from the behind post. Melbourne deep in attack. Melbourne's quarter. And Flower even with a smile. Williams, but under pressure, kicking it straight to Stretch, who was sorely tempted to play on. And might well have done. He's kicking, I'd say, from just outside range, although he's a very long kick of the ball. And he's had lots of it so far. This is his eighth kick, his fifth of the quarter. It lobs in the square, and Ironmonger fists it through for a behind. Mm. And the margin is 21 points. And the rain's still with us. And I would think that the rain would give Melbourne some advantage, Jeff, because they're a side of real goers, and they bore in heart, lack a little bit of class of some of the other sides, and the clean ball handling of some of the Swans players. And I would think these conditions would suit them because it's making it very, very slippery. Well, Holden almost took the mark, but feeds it off to Bolton and kicks to the forward line. And a mark here by Lovett. Gee, they're marking the football very well, considering it's like a cake of soap. Maybe not like a cake of soap at the moment, the way these boys are handling it. And there's young uh, Greg Healy. Held on to it. Swerves around Williams. Kicks it wildly, though, hoping there's a demon with a big uh, mark there. Oh, that's Carter almost mark it. Iron Munger thumping away as Williams uh, of Melbourne puts a, a strong tackle on the giant Ruckman and he forces the ball up. Demons half forward line. They're leading by 21 points. Swans have won six of their last ten, but they're going to have to produce a great effort to win this match. They're on the ropes, trailing by 21 points halfway through the second quarter. And Greg Williams being spoken to, the man who got the umpire's votes last year, or enough of them, to share the Brownlow medal with Robert Dippier Domenico. is something of a bet noir with the umpires at the moment. And Tom Hafey with a furrowed brow. Carter. Throwing the ball. Melbourne free kick within scoring range to be taken by Jackson who kicked one from almost on the same spot this time, well not this time last week, great tackling 
Jackson's ninth kick. He has been outstanding from the 50 metre line. Just touched on the line. Another behind the Melbourne. They are blazing away, dominating this quarter. They've kicked three goals, six to 1 1. And the first. Uh... The first time since 64 that the Demons have made the finals. It looked like they're going to win this one as it's Spalding taking a super mark. The half-back's in fine touch. I think it's about his third or fourth big mark. Third mark, it's a huge kick into the goal square. Campbell! The whole... Ta! Yes! Robbie Flower. It's Flower down at the MCG. Robbie's third goal. Well, they say that uh, Reigns the flowers bloom and certainly the flowers in full flight and blooming magnificently today look at the way he read that off the pack and what a great kick by earl spaulding who's dominating now at center half back tony moore has been a disappointment there across center half forward because he's not really able to hold spaulding's marking power and i'm certain that uh, tom hafey has got two problems one is at uh, center half forward and one is uh, in defense playing on robert flower where the move of Cordy at this stage has not worked because he already has had five shots at goals, including three majors. Steins replaces Williams for Melbourne. As the Swans have to try and stop the onslaught, Bolton forced backwards, but now weaves a clear path and kicks to half forward. Good spoiling, though, by the Demons. And away they burst. Stretch, who's been a star. Great delivery. Free kick for sure. Play on now. Healy. Good tackle, good late tackle. And Carter Mark on the very last line. And what a great game he's played too, Carter, because Williams has just been taken off the ground, but he's one of the few swans now really standing the pressure. And his flowers, uh, apparent, and Cordy kicks it out, but all those demons are running in numbers, the handball stretch. A good match from him. It's a short kick, though, down to Dean. He won't get there. But the loose ball to Healy. He had a look, steady some goals, and the demons are running right in this second quarter. Well, so far in this quarter, Jeff, they've kicked, let's see, three, five, six goals, five to the Swans, two behinds. And all done in 18 minutes. A goal every uh, three minutes. And it could be that uh, there may have been a report there that Greg Williams may have uh, had his number taken uh, in an incident with Simon Eichold. So there's an interesting one. Murphy a scrambled kick, he hasn't really got into it, Mitchell under pressure though, now Hughes runs at the ball, and well done by the Melbourne vice captain, Yates drops a sitter, but he's got teammates there, but Bolton beats about four of them and does it beautifully, Coleman off to Carroll, who deliberates and then still kicks badly, Morwood to Mitchell, Spalding to put pressure on, got him high, and Mitchell will take the free kick, I think once he heard the whistle, his condition improved rapidly. <laughs> it looks always a bit unlucky there, as you see. That's, uh, oh, well, I may not, uh, I'll take that back. He got in, but I don't know whether it hurt quite as much as Mitchell indicated. Well, Barry Mitchell has had quite a few possessions, but he's really had trouble in breaking away and getting his kick and being penetrating. But he generally can kick a goal. 45 metres out. Tight angle, no goal, no score. Throw in Swan's forward pocket at the 23 minute mark, and they trail by 36 points. The Swans have uh, their veteran Mark Browning uh, on the field, uh, and a couple of long kicks from him could make this picture change completely. They need goals, they've not scored a goal in this quarter. Mitchell again, across to Moore. Not much room to work there. And the ball out of play. Opposite flank. I think that's a reasonable suggestion too, Jeff, that uh, the long kicking of Browning, maybe he could be brought onto the forward line because uh, he has been known to kick a goal when he has been placed there. Brett Scott, natural left footer, and a lovely kick of the ball, and he splits the middle. The Swans finally get their first goal of the quarter. It took them 23 and a half minutes, and the trusty, deadly left boot of Brett Scott brings them back to within 30 points. Yes, well, Brett Scott started on the interchange bench and Paul Hawke was taken off, off the field. He was having a lot of trouble getting into the game. 
But uh, Carroll and Coleman have been struggling. Ironmonger's been down. Bolton and Moore would need the lift for the Swans. So do uh, Bays and Hawk when he gets his opportunity. So a lot of the Swans players down. And it's going to be a real test now to see whether Sydney can get back into it. Here goes Healy. There's a chance for him to kick another goal here. He's in the 50 metre. Oh, he hit a cow pack. Let's go now. It's touch and go. A bit of shivering required. It wasn't touched or was it clear. It's a goal. Greg Healy has stuck. What a goal. And that's what the Swans needed. Two quick goals and a superhuman solo effort there by Jared Healy. He really burst out of the pack here. Now, let's remember that he's been missing. He came back last week, but he missed the previous three games with a stress fracture of the foot. And what did the ball hit there, Leaky? A cow what? Cow pat. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question is, how did it get there? <laughs> That's the important question. But what a goal. And maybe is this the sign for the Swans to really show some of that spirit? The margin, 24 points. The Sydney side is hit back. O'Dwyer, though, puts Melbourne deep into attack. The scout is Jackson. He deserves a goal. And gets it. Cordy says it was touched. The field umpire says it was touched. And it goes down as a behind. She's third behind. And a close look at it. Cordy just getting a finger on. Back into play. Carter. Sterling job from the veteran fullback Rod Carter. And he fired up. Healy certainly one of the Swans' best, but the delivery's not terribly good. The thump out by him. But here's Brown. Long kicking Browning, but caught on the wrong foot. And then he takes it over the line. A push in the back. And Browning takes the free kick. We'll have to go back a metre or two. Now in this quarter, Melbourne have kicked six goals, eight. The Swans, two goals, two as Browning's long kick to the half forward line. Oh, Dwyer for Melbourne slipped at the critical moment. Bailey off the Lovett. Roberts summed it up well. And Browning, the man they brought on in this quarter, his experience, lovely duck away from trouble. It's a beautiful pass. To whom though? Ironmonger. Bolton, a quick twist out of trouble. A long kick, it might skip through. Now it's wide of the scoring area and a top mark there by Lovett. Melbourne's lead, 25 points. In time on in the second term. Chance for the Swans. Well played, Mitchell, sold the dummy. To Carroll at full forward, and there's a Swan scout. But beautifully done by White. He looked to be in an impossible position, and now he's set up a Melbourne attack. Greg Healy off the centre of the ground. Gets the lead from Flower. 45 metres out for Kevin Bartman. How about Sean White? The chips were down. He had one against him in a Swan scout, and somehow he beat them both. Super play, and uh, of course that kick off the ground. It may have looked luck, but I think it's an old Gaelic player that he may have meant it. Flower for goal number four. It's home. And that is the inspiration that the crowd needed, and perhaps that Melbourne needed. From out of defence, from the last line, to Danny Hughes, to Greg Healy in the centre, and there was no stopping them. No, Greg Healy here, and I'm a bit disappointed in uh, Neil Cordy. I feel that maybe he should have should have grabbed hold of Flower when they were coming down the field with that loose man, but he was some 40 metres away when Flower took that mark. And really, uh, under those situations, you have to really claim the player and try and stop him from leading. But four goals to Flower, three in this quarter. And the Demons into attack through Jackson. And now I shot. Oh, the big fellow, Steins, and he plays on, and Gailey gets through. <laughs> than his coach for playing on. <laughs> he didn't quite know what to do having taken the mark. Well, he's been a big problem to him all day. Big Steins has done well in the ruck. Of course, they took Williams off the field. Now, look at this. <laughs> but I'll tell you what he did. He had the presence of mind to kick the ball over there, Jeffrey. Uh, otherwise, it could have been smothered. He was caught between codes. <laughs> well, we see uh, Neil Cordy now has been placed onto Steins. And uh, moved away from Robert Flower. It's and that job now has gone to Rod Carter. That was on, Kevin. You've been nominating that. Yates for Melbourne. Out wide. Dean got a good bounce, but still fumbled. Oh, the desperation. 
And the Demons don't like that. Campbell, oh, tremendous attempt. Browning and Campbell in ferociously. Great tackling by Flower. Steins again. Touch ball. Melbourne have kicked eight, nine for the quarter, and Kevin Bartlett, I can tell you, it's a record second quarter in a first semi-final. <laughs> well, if anyone knows anything about records, Tim, it's you. And uh, if I ever go and poll $6,000 question, I ever resurrect it, I'll be your coach. <laughs> you can come into the box with me. All we've got to do is find Roland Strong. Where is he? <laughs> I'd Almost 30 minutes uh, for this, in this second quarter. It's been the Demons' quarter, and the fans have lapped it up, the Demon fans, and there's a lot of sympathetic people here as well. Here's Dean, runs across the line. The statistics that have been flowing in this second quarter, uh, and uh, very pro for the Demons. The record second uh, quarter final. Handball. The Swans are coming out of trouble at the moment as they get towards the siren ready to go for half time any minute. Lovett's been a strong play on that back line for them. Williams around the neck. Well, uh, we know that. Williams had his name taken by this same umpire in Cameron in this quarter early. And not the first time the champ's been reported this season. Good mark to Healy. He's really given them a lift. But his ankle's gone again. Or is it his foot? He's hobbling. And that's bad luck for them uh, if he can't recover. Well, he's had a stress fracture of the foot and he's been in terrible trouble and a lot of pain. And what I believe is that uh, there's not much they can do about the pain. He's got to just endure that bear and grin it. But it stops him. Uh, his kicking distance, of course, is, uh, is affected. Well, it wasn't too bad. Good on you, Gerard. Coleman! It's so he got an artificial leg on there, doesn't it? The way he's got it <laughs> up over the knee. First kick. <laughs> this and is his first kick. Yeah. Now, can he kick the goal? Goodness knows they need it. 73 to 35, and he'll kick it now. Relay free. Uh, <laughs> further down the ground, the Demon defence has infringed. Carroll Sean, there. Sean White might have been the offender. The umpire was speaking to him, or is it Spalding? They're both standing there, looking suitably chastised. And that's one thing we've seen in umpiring this year, Tim, where they have been very aware of what's happening in the goal square when a person's been having a shot for goal. Dennis Carroll. Couldn't miss from there. Kicks the Swans third for the quarter. But it's been Melbourne's quarter, as the scoreboard shows, and the Demons lead by 32 points. Well, Jared Healy has certainly been the Swans' best player. We see Coleman here. He's been one of their disappointing players, along with Big Iron Munger and Moorwood and Bays. Uh, big guns that the Swans are hoping to fire. And, of course, then the free kick was relayed down the field with Carroll after the umpire deemed that Sean White uh, was infringing and uh, that enabled Carroll to kick his second goal. 32 minutes gone. Almost siren time. Almost half time in the first semi. Viney for Melbourne, who got it all rolling in this term with those two outstanding individual efforts. Bolton, Mitchell, and the Swans might get another late goal. Good stuff from Mitchell. Again, two on one in the Swans' favour, and Carroll on the siren, but he beat the siren and will get his shot of goal after the bell from 50 metres out. And this a very testing shot and a most important kick for the Swans' captain. A moment ago, the margin was 38 points. It could be back to 26. He's offline. He's missed a couple that he might have kicked. And he might curse himself as he heads for the Swans change rooms. The end of a great second quarter by Melbourne. Every time you come into a money store, you find something different every time. Can the Demons mount another charge? Oh, they certainly look like a low drive rushing in there very quickly. And a raised arm there by Craig Holden to try and crash his way through. The racehorse bolt, he gets it, but doesn't do much with it. He's caught around the neck a little. Holden clears the kick. The Swans kicking to the left, of course, and the rain's back with us. Bit of teamwork coming here with the Demons. Oh, that's out on the full and way out on the full. The Swans will pick up the kick. Mitchell, the player, to take it. And... Uh, 
the fact that it's held this one's back is the the lack of the ability there forwards to get a touch and kick goals is mitchell's kick common in the middle of that pack rovers are needed he's falling beautiful handball to yates yates on the wing now for the demons kick to robbie flower isn't that a lovely mark he's having a wonderful day may make robbie change his mind and line up again for the demons after his super game today into full forward to steins newport scouting everybody sprawling jostling getting angry a few hands on faces a disturbing trend in some of these scuffles in recent times and jim steins irish blood who is coming to the surface as he tangles with former melbourneian jared healy the elder brother of greg who was one of the victorian players tempted and lured to the swans when they were bought privately umpire cameron to bounce it 31 points the margin right gets a free kick and tom hafey has uh, altered his forward line a little bit he's moved more to a forward pocket coleman now has the job at center half forward on spalding and murphy has been moved back to the half forward flank and right one of the swans best coleman uh, with his leg heavily bandages uh, you can see there a little man heading and spalding clears the pack a lovely mark a pass to steins interference against Steins was a push and Bernard Tui for the Swans drives him deep onto that half forward flank almost to the wing stretch just couldn't get there in time Mitchell for the Swans a good player oops pounds the ball into the turf this heavy turf and right up the, fo the forward pocket a flat footed leap there by Dennis Carroll he had to be two and couldn't and the ball out of play and in a trice it's travelled from defence to attack and it's just in the Swans forward pocket and Holden has also moved on to centre wing to pick up Stephen Stretch, who had a brilliant uh, second turn where he had eight kicks. O'Dwyer, beautifully. Eichel, lovely knock on. Stretch, long beyond the centre. Jackson outreached here. Does well to uh, get a fist onto it against Roberts. Viney and Browning. Browning. Well tackled, just about an illegal hand pass. The throw in is the umpire's decision. Three and a half minutes into the term. And no score so far. Still 73 to 42. Free kick to Ironmonger. Almost kickless, I'd say. Then uh, he goes back to a man who can really kick the football. It's Browning, and it's a low one. Wobble, and again, Spalling's there. I guess that's his sixth mark that he's taken. Sorry, four marks. Sorry, Tom. The Demons into attack. They're kicking the ball well. Campbell a chance. No, he tapped it on, hoping there was someone there, but there's no one there. Tui for the Swans is there. Tries to beat too many. The kick is not good. Into the arms of Stretch. One of Melbourne's best. He circles round. A good 70 metres from goal, and he lets fly. Stein's a big chance. Taps it down to the small man. Robbie Flower. Tui. The kick recovery, and the kick by Campbell. And he's missed it. It's a behind. And Tony Campbell was a bit of a surprise packet last week when he lined up in the forward pocket and he booted three goals. And of course, uh, he's been brought onto the ground earlier today when they've taken O'Dwyer off to have a, a smaller man in that pocket. So it still looks like it could be a danger today for the Swans. The rain has fallen almost since the start of this second half, and that's not going to help the Swans get back. Scoring becomes that much more difficult. Warren Dean at ground level is 40 metres out directly in front. As Eichold scrambled it onto the left boot, it fell straight into the arms of the Melbourne centre half forward. One of the really long kicks in the game. The distance not a problem. The accuracy not a problem. And the all important first goal of the second half is kicked by Melbourne. And they lead by 38 points after five minutes in the turn. And we see uh, Mitchell there with the ball and being magnificently smothered there by Spalding, picked up by Eichold, who came onto the ground when Milson went off injured and it's lobbed in the arms there of Warren Dean, who has, uh, has had a pretty tough tack time against uh, Wayne Henwood, who has really stuck to his guns when you consider that was Dean's first goal. And uh, Melbourne have really been into attack most of the time. 25 scoring shots to 12. Melbourne, Melbourne, scream the crowd. 
Brown. Oh, take a time by Vining. His tackle home fends off a tackle. And it's a free kick. He to the spawns. That was Roberts who gets it. There's a player down behind playing its ice hole. And uh, he'll pick up the, the kick to the Demons. And Tim, you are right. With the rain tower heavy now, it's going to make it an awfully big job for the Swans to get back this leeway. 42 to 80, 38 points down. Kick by Roberts. He's played well for the Swans. And here's Browning. He dribbles it down towards uh, well, it's Scott. He can't pick it up, but Viney does. What right on the batting line. And loops it out. Crashed into a couple of umbrellas there and may have broken the river too. They don't just keep the rain <laughs> off you, they keep, they keep the footballs off you as well. <laughs> That's a terrific diagnosis, Jeff. <laughs> Quite brilliant. Almost seven minutes gone in the turn, and a football has disappeared in the crowd. Finally, a pang of conscience, and the ball comes <laughs> back. <laughs> as Holden kicks to the wing, this is the heaviest rain we've had, spalling a massive leap. Love it. Held and gets the free kick. Umpire Cameron right on the scene. And Brett Lovett, one of a number of players who have come to Melbourne, unsung from other clubs, and who have shone in the latter part of this season. Kicks them into attack. Jackson, the scout, and Campbell. Browning getting a hand on it. Holden. Forced to centre the ball. Dangerous for the Swans. Melbourne with the numbers. Greg Healy, 40 metres out. Just offline. Healy's 11th kick, overshadowed a little by his more illustrious brother, but he's a fine footballer in his own right, doing very well. Melbourne in front by 39 points. It's a lead there by Tui. It's being ignored as Carter kicks it out. Ironmonger, well, he hasn't done much today, so he's not much of a target. Messi knocks it to the ground, and it's the opposition now. It's Lovett. Spalding's been a top player at halfback. All stolen well by Browning. A long kick to who? It's a spearing kick into the lap of Morwood. He gets a call out there from Murphy. Murphy, high kick, drifting to the right. And it's a Swans score behind. The first score for the quarter. Well, two behinds by Murphy, and on that occasion, the Swans should have got better results. But uh, the hand pass was not really a, a good one, and then Murphy had to kick under pressure. Danny Hughes, straight down the middle. Sign of confidence. Stretch, who's a great runner. Could just about go from 65 metres. Stein Shepherds, and it's home! And that is reward for effort by Stephen Stretch, one of the best of the 40 in this first semi final. Well, look at this. There's the kick out. The ball over the top, the tap on there by Viney, taken by Stretch, so there was only two kicks for this goal, one from the full back, the other from Stretch, who has Holden on now, Bays is off the field, couldn't uh, match it with Stretch, and also Hawk is off, so two of the Swans' most talented ball handlers are off the field in these greasy conditions, and Stretch, an absolute star, we mentioned he had eight kicks alone in that second quarter, uh, for 11 possessions in that first half and two marks, so... Once again, he started off his third term in magnificent style. And did you see where he kicked that goal? He kicked it from the 45 by 45 squares. A good 60-metre kick to the goal mount that went through comfortably. Ironmonger. Grabbed around the shoulder was Mitchell by uh, the opposite rover or rover there in uh, Greg Healy. Now Mitchell's kick, a lead there from Coleman. He's got to beat two demons. Oh, he did it! Good thinking by Coleman there, and the ball uh, dropped in front of him. And a long kick, Tony Morwood. No, not the way. Demon's good. Here's Murphy. Oh, and he's picked up and dragged across the skittle. And Lover uh, has skidded into the fence, and yeah. his head really ricocheted when bang against that just say CC's. See? <laughs> I think he just said out. Swans deep in attack. Williams, Morwood. But Melbourne closing it up so effectively. Williams off the ground. A great goal. And the Swans pretty excited about it. And didn't they need it? 
They still trail by 38 points. It's their first goal of this quarter, coming at the 10 and a half minute mark. And a great bit of work off the ground by Greg Williams. Just kicked it off, and uh, <laughs> it was uh, great thinking. We've said he's got a great football brain, but the Swans uh, need a couple of quick goals, really, because every time they get a goal, the Demons get one back almost instantly. So they have to get the ball out of the centre at this centre bounce. See if you're right. Iron Munger's gritting his teeth. Stein taps it back. The Healy can't get it. That was right across to Healy. This is Jared Healy. That's a long, beautiful kick. Oh, and a great save there by Danny Hughes. It's a behind, but the Swans have picked up a little bit of momentum in the last couple of minutes. Hughes again kicks down the middle, and why not? Stein's in front. Good spoil, Iron Munger. But away go the Demons again through uh, Jackson. Carver and Flower. Flower wins brilliantly. Great hand pass to Dean. Can go all the way. Misses everything. Doesn't trouble the scorer. And what a great opportunity wasted. He could have cut the distance by 20 metres. I think he dared not bounce the ball on the slippery turf. Well, he could have touched the ground with it, of course, Tim, but uh, probably with our Melbourne player close by after that long hand pass from Flowery, there was probably no talk. To his kick in, to uh, a maze of uh, Demons and Swans, and Dean again, he won't tip it from there. Down towards Campbell. And he was always going to mark that. He played that piece, or that passage, brilliantly. Holding right with him, and Campbell, as you can see, well, you, you will in a moment, after you see him take this mark. Campbell to kick from 30 metres no more and Melbourne leading by 37 points. Roar the crowd and it split the middle. That's a positive effort. Well, he's kicked 1-1 one, one this quarter, playing in the forward pocket. Bernard Tui is his opponent. And Tui did quite well early in the game. When the rain was coming down, he was against bigger opponents, but it seemed to suit him. He's also back from injury. So it's going to be interesting to see how his fitness holds up because Campbell there out in front taking that kick that just dropped short and uh, he's proving to be uh, a very handy player, Tony Campbell. So Melbourne with the response. If the Swans had kicked the next one, you never know. Williams, Hawk, held high, free kick. So if that long shot from Jared Healy had floated through, it just might have turned the game, but uh, it looks unturnable now as Wright kicks beyond half board. Bailey scouts the pack. Big Stein's getting chased, but first there is Roberts. Stein's did well to mow him down. Holden. Sean Wright couldn't quite hold an awkwardly wobbling ball. Stretch. Bailey. Back to the centre line for Melbourne. Stein's under it. Iron Munger the fist on. Iron Munger to Browning. Hurried to half forward. But the Demons are the ball first again. Love it. Bolton now for the Swans. Good start. Big chance. Williams. Good hand pass. Back to Bolton, but a great tackle from Lovett. And Melbourne off the hook. Through hard work and endeavour. Hughes back to the centre. Great passage of play this by both teams. Dean sweeps a great hand pass. Eichold to half forward. O'Dwyer from behind, a good spoil. Campbell for his second. Still. Yes! Well, what great quick thinking by Tony Campbell. And I think that has put it out of reach. The margin, 49 points. Well, apart from that, Tim, uh, the Melbourne side is just playing too well at the moment. They've got too many good players. The Swans are really struggling to find good players. The consistency there is in the Melbourne side. And look at that. For a guy who's about six foot two, good quick thinking, just kicked it off the ground. We see now that Coleman has gone to centre half back on Warren Dean to try and, uh, well, bolster the uh, defence, which is under unbelievable pressure at this particular stage. Not many players like uh, the endeavour of, of right today for the Swans. And there's always more demons where the ball is. Newport. Stretch. Not this time. Mitchell. To Hawk. The man out there is Browning. No one was leading for Browning. Every swan was flat-footed. 
Get one in there short to Craig Holden. He kicks it. He kicks it to full forward. <laughs> Didn't carry to Carroll. Pick up here by White. Again for the Demons. A super defender. Top game. And a bit unlucky. It just landed across the line. A free kick for the Swans. Holden. Finds Healy. Dennis Carroll kicked a goal from about this spot in the first quarter. Surely Lightning couldn't strike <laughs> the same place twice because it really is the proverbial impossible angle. 13th kick coming up for Jared Healy. Started the game brilliantly. Has faded a little. Looked as though his injured foot might have been troubling him late in the second quarter. Good try. Oh, great try. <laughs> <laughs> Magnificent goal. This one's second for the turn, but still the margin is 41 points at the 19-minute mark. Healy's second goal, and good to see that the Swans haven't given this first semi-final away. Well, identical shot uh, to Dennis Carroll's in the opening quarter, and what a beautiful kick by Jared Healy, who, of course, would have had plenty of practice of kicking goals at the MCG. But he has been a marvellous player. We've, we've mentioned before his foot injury. He's had some 18, 19 possessions now. Uh, for the game, and uh, he's well underway to easily being the Swans' best player. And there's another one of the best players. It was Steve Wright. Browning, oh, not often he would do that kicking to the man running through. A good pick up here by Steins, and he ballooned out to the forward pocket. Campbell works his way to the front and almost marked it. Crunch. O'Dry went down, knocked by a small man. Dean tries to thread it through, but misses the scoring area. That's out in the full, so it'll be a, a Swans' free kick. It was a very heavy blow by Stevie Wright, <laughs> hip and shoulder, and really did shake up uh, Steve O'Dwyer. A match of tremendous physical contests. Nothing untoward, by and large, but uh, a lot of solid clashes. Cordy's kick to half-back. Greg Williams hemmed in. Newport in a hurry. How will it bounce? Campbell the flick on. Carter, well tackled by Campbell. Mm. Just time to get it to Browning to the centre of the ground. Well done, Bailey. Stretch again. Superb wingman. And finds a man in space in Healy. Cuts the distance to 35 metres. And responds to his brother's goal with his own second. And once again, the Demons lead by 47 points. And their vice-captain showing great steadiness there. And terrific uh, knock-on there by... Bailey, who's been started the game as a ruck rover, then went to the halfback flank for most of the game, and of course, it then moved ball was given across to uh, Greg Healy, and what a magnificent running goal for his second for the match, and we see Tui now uh, is coming off, and Tony Moore back onto the ground. And Craig Holland uh, has lifted his game in this third term for the Swans, the All Australian, and starting to show a little bit of that uh, style of football, and love it. A strong defender this afternoon, what a good kick. Almost a beautiful Mark Williams, a clever effort. Threading his way through is Jackson for the Demons. In the way was Browning for the Swans. Roberts runs. Roberts runs again. Tried to shepherd for Neil Cordy, but the ball has caught a tile the tied Neil Cordy and rolled out from Melbourne's half forward line. Almost 22 minutes gone in the turn. Melbourne have kicked five goals to two in the quarter to tighten their grip on this first semi. Williams off the ground. Holden. Oh, well done, Stretch. And support from Jackson, who's been superb. Flower, who's kicked four goals. Newport, well tackled by two. But still a chance for Melbourne. Greg Healy, a sweeping hand pass. Hurried kick from Yates. Campbell with good body work, but Browning with nowhere else to go. Forcing it behind. The difference is 48 points. Browning. Long to half-back. Well taken by Cordy. Keen to play on, but O'Dwyer in his path. Or threatening to get in his path. In the centre line, Hawke in front. Mitchell the scout. Swan's always kicking in a hurry. And as a result, just not able to piece their game together. And that's a tribute to Melbourne's 
work. They just haven't stopped, and they haven't stopped in the last eight matches. And our dry look, our Stein looked pretty good there. Here's Paul Hawke on the centre. Oh, try to find a man amidst three demons. Great hole and another good run and a good attempt at tackle and stopping running by Stephen Stretch. A crackerjack game from uh, number 18, Stretch the Demons, and look, look at that again. Yes, he's had, had a, a superb game and a superb year, and there's some Melbourne people who believe he may poll very well in the Brownlow medal, and uh, that comes from the coach, John Northern. Scott from a long way out. On his preferred kicking boot, he made good contact, but didn't really have time to have a look at the sticks. Scores are behind, and the Swans down by eight goals. 48 points the difference. As O'Dwyer is coming off for Melbourne, and the more mobile Williams comes back to full forward. Applause for O'Dwyer. Demons uh, members would support anything in red and blue at the moment. The ball to be thrown in on the Swans half forward flank. In time on in this quarter. And as they did last week against North Melbourne, the Demons grabbing the match by the scruff of the neck in the second term and consolidating in the third. And they're well on their way to a place in the last three in the preliminary final. Free kick to Mitchell, held when not in possession. 15 metre penalty, but still, he'll be outside range. Best part of 20 possessions to Mitchell as he goes long to full forward. Touch ball, and Coop watches it through for a behind. And the difference, 47. And with the ball coming off the pack there, we've noticed when the Swans play well, they have a lot of players at ground level, but today a lot of balls have spilled in that goal square without the Swans being able to take advantage. The Demons go forward, they're up to the centre of the ground now. That was Roberts. And Swans, spalling again. It's just great mark. I think the marks he's taken have been probably more important than anyone else's today because uh, they've all been great overhead attempts and usually results or caps it off with a long kick. Not so long this time. Holden for the Swans, dropped in short. Off to Browning. Browning with a beautifully placed kick. Oh, it's not, because White will just run into this. But bad luck for Browning. His forwards let him down again as Lovett pings the ball into the middle. Bailey missed it, picked up by Yates. Flower, half volley. Williams just on the ground. And Solis, he gives it quickly across there towards Jackson. And Jackson converts, does what he has to, goals. Well, a good move by John Northey. Steins and O'Dwyer on the ground, and he decided that he'd take big O'Dwyer off and bring on the more mobile Williams. And we can see here the, the skills of Williams with that beautiful left-hand hand pass, which would have travelled a good 15 metres. And that just set up the goal for young Ricky Jackson, who had given uh, Ian Roberts the slip out there in the half-forward flank on the outer side of the ground. Well, the but they're under fierce pressure, the defence of the Swans, and Roberts has at least been a gallant try for them today. After an eight-goal second quarter, they've kicked six in the third. To wrap up this first semi-final, it would seem it would take... An unlikely turn of events for it to be prized off them. Healy kicks them into attack again. Flower out of position. Oh, and Carter. Carter takes it well. And Rod Carter will be hating it. One of the meanest, toughest competitors in the game. David Murphy back from injury just hasn't got into it. But well, again, Melbourne's endeavour closes it up. Well, that's a team lifting performance here. Let's have a look there. We see Ricky Jackson absolutely throwing himself here at Murphy. Chase Carter. And this really does lift the spirit of a side when you see one player take on three and beat them. Demons in attack. Hawk, Browning into trouble. Didn't know it was coming. Hawk, back to the centre line. Sporting a little knock on. Ball up. There's Between Dennis. Centre and half forward for Melbourne. Sorry, Tim, there's Dennis Carroll uh, on the back line at the moment. And the one thing I'd say that. Uh, when Carter was moved out from full-back to on Robbie Flower, it certainly uh, bottled him up after he kicked three goals, three of his four in that brilliant uh, second term for Flower, but Carter's got his measure right now. And here's young Jackson. Todd Viney kicked two great goals in that second term. Unselfish to Yates, an easy one. Two to Yates, 
than two from the man who gave it to him, number 12, in Todd Friday. Who's shown a great ability to break tackles. He's very strong. He is strong, and uh, he, he has quick hands. He's got a very good football brain. And he sizes up the situation very quickly. And Melbourne are very good at giving the ball off to a player who's in a better position, who then can kick without being under pressure. And now the final term about to get underway with Melbourne 60 points clear of the Swans. In fact, they've doubled their score, 120 to 60. Peter Cameron to start the last term, and here's Jeff Leak. An impossible task uh, for the Swans. Ten goals behind, and no drive for the Demons gets up quickly. Uh, Todd Viney working hard to pick it up. Stolen him by Steve Wright. The ball out to Morwood. The long frame runs into it. Not more, it's Carroll, I'm sorry, and uh, he has not as much from Terry. I'll take it again. Greg Healy, Gerard Healy. Fourth time lucky. Yes. <laughs> Thirds would be bad enough. And the throw in. Swans forward line. Demons kick out. <laughs> he stood his ground well uh, there, young Todd Viney. Browning, a bit unlucky for the Swans not to be able to contain it, but maybe he's happy about that. Colm. They've turned the lights on at the MCG. I said earlier it's one of those typical Melbourne days where one minute the sky's blue and the next minute it's raining. Well, it's uh, not quite that typical now. The sky is very grey and has been for quite a while. Carroll, the captain, puts the Swans into attack. Coleman. Tony Morwood with the left boot. Kicks well. And that's a good start to the Swans. A goal in 80 seconds. They need at least nine more to grab this match. And I doubt that any final has ever been won from a 10-goal three-quarter time deficit. But the modern game is such that scoring can happen pretty quickly. And let's not write the Sydney signers off. Well, Tony Maud has been well out of form today. He's been off on the interchange bench. He struggled playing at centre-half forward. I played in a final once, Tim, where we were seven goals down in a preliminary final. and we, At half-time, we got up and won. But uh, I think you're right. I don't think anyone has come from ten goals down at three-quarter time to win. If so, it's going to be a thrilling last quarter. <laughs> I agree with both of you. Here's Bob. Or nicely. Carroll. Yates. Then over the top of Danny Hughes, and love it to help him if needed. And Hughes has summed it up, he's taken the ball out. And Dennis Carroll has been moved now to centre-half back to pick up Warren Dean, who's had about four opponents today. Henwood started on him, Coleman went there for a while, now Dennis Carroll. Coleman for the Swans, O'Dwyer for Melbourne beats him. And punches it back whence it came between the wing and the half-forward flank on the outer side and the Melbourne fans in the outer have had another great day. Second Sunday in a row they've come to the MCG and been delighted with what they've seen. Williams tunnelling it. Hughes, rugged fullback for Melbourne. Another solid performance. Oh, great mark, Brett Bailey, who kicked the winning goal for Melbourne in the night grand final earlier in the year. I showed beautifully off to Greg Healy. Dean... And Healy bangs Melbourne deep into attack for Steins. Throw in forward pocket for Melbourne. And the Demons uh, are 54 points in front. They've conceded one goal at the 82nd mark in this final term. We're about the three and a half now. And we can't see the Swans getting back to win this one. Williams. Bays to hate the hand pass from Carter but he slipped he threads it off to Browning Browning wobbles the kick at lands right in the lap of the opposition in Steve Stretch a great performance in Stretch today he's beaten a couple of opponents now he has uh, holding with him it's his 16th kick and it may be a goal it is a goal oh touch right on the line But he did kick a beautiful goal uh, in the third term. Uh, a good 60-metre shot. Well, that was very close. Line ball. But it was touched inside. Poor kick in. But well taken, not taken by Browning. Greg Healy again. Bailey. Browning takes the crumb. 
with a lot of kicks in the second half. Coleman to Murphy. Not quite ready for this match after being sidelined for so long. And here's the colourful Scotsman come Irishman Sean White, but a bad kick straight to Coleman. On the centre line, back to half forward from behind Hawke, but in front of him, teammate Williams. And in position, Norwood. Quick delivery from Williams, well taken. Tony Norwood. Crowd not happy, not feeling it should have been paid, but I felt he had good enough purchase. And no doubt that that was a mark. He only lost it as he hit the ground. Fifth kick only, or fourth according to those stats. For his second goal, and he doesn't miss too many. He's kicked two goals in the first five minutes of this last quarter and just given the Swans fans the slightest glimmer of hope. But they still trail by 49 points. Well, we mentioned before he has had a disappointing day, but two goals in this final term uh, underlines the, the danger that he can be. But only four kicks today and three marks, and two of those in this uh, final term. So he has struggled. Uh, Sean White has the task of curving him in this final term, with Maud now at full forward and Carroll at centre half back. And the Swans have picked up a couple of goals, but there's still eight goals behind in this final term. And here's the brilliant Steve Stretch with another long kick. Oh, Steins almost. And that was Bays, who thumped it through for uh, behind uh, for Melbourne. Bays, of course, the Swans' utility player of the day. <laughs> the Browning playing on, not kicking well. Newport, well tackled, but gaining 30 metres and a chance for the Demons. But the tenacious right saves for the Swans as Dwyer comes off again for Melbourne. Crowd roaring for a free kick for Melbourne for a deliberate out. But Wright was quite entitled to do that. He didn't have other options. That was just a clearing kick which happened to find the line. Steins does it well. Bays shouldn't have gone to ground then. Williams, who's been tackled every time he's got the ball. Bays kicks 30 metres. Stretch, great mark. Well, he must be close to the best player on the ground, Stephen yeah. Stretch. He get my vote, Kevin. 15 metres as well. We'll bring him to almost the 50 metre line. He's inside it. And for this, he deserves a goal. He kicked one from further out than this in the third quarter, but on the run, with all the momentum that that can provide. But he can do it. Low, zooming, and straight. Straight as a gun barrel. Well, any chance of the Swans uh, making a comeback just ended with that kick of Stephen Stretch and that very good mark over Holden. Uh, the Swans really needed to kick four or five goals without reply to really uh, think that they may be able to snatch a memorable win. But uh, that goal now by Stretch has sealed it. If it wasn't sealed, that's really good. Already, goal. yes. Now Dwyer off the field. Melbourne very quick to replace him when the rain came down with Williams, probably a more mobile player. And Williams has been on interchange with Ruckman. Here's Bolt. Hasn't done much with his kicks, as he hasn't done much there, and it's marked by Steins. Yeah. Bolton gets the ball, and he played like a small ant, ran the opposite way, kicks it towards the half-forward, finds a teammate there in... Uh, in who? Eichol. It's Eichol. <laughs> He's done a very good job playing on Williams since uh, Wilson left the field with an injured ankle. And Eichol's kicked to a lead in the pocket. There's Campbell. Got He's got it. He's very bulky and strong. He keeps his opponent behind him, doesn't he? And the flight of the ball in front of him and just enough room to measure just to tuck it through his chest with the wet ball. Let's uh, look at that and watch him again. Number 40 is Campbell. And he's taken uh, several of his marks on his chest, which uh, testifies to his strength. And he can kick. And for the second week in a row, he's kicked three goals for the Demons. They're in the preliminary final. Of that, there can be absolutely no doubt now as they lead by 63 points. And Tony Campbell got his chance last week due to uh, injuries late in the piece and suspensions. He was elevated to the seniors. He's just been an occasional player for the Demons, a 20-year-old former Campbellwell grammarian. But he's overcome every hurdle. He's got a namesake who's the World Indoor and uh, World Cup high hurdling champion. And this Tony Campbell's overcome a few himself. But as happened last year, the qualifying final and the first semi-final of Runaway from the Swans. Dean High, Campbell, 
jostling, manoeuvring again. Play on's the call, no mark, and the cheers turn to booze as the Swans go off the hook. Barry Mitchell just beats Campbell's bump, but credit to Campbell, who fought on like a caged lion. Williams nicely to Healy, the two Swan motivators. Healy to half forward and Norwood, who's kicked two goals in the quarter, does well. Bays, there's an unguarded goal and the ball could just about slither home. Right giving chase with Coop, but behind of the Swans. Halfway through the last quarter, Melbourne leading by 63 points. Bays just came on uh, almost the moment he got that kick to replace Coleman. Oh, lovely attempt. Top mark again to Stephen Stretchy. He's playing at the top of his confidence. One of his best matches, I'm sure, for the year. And he saved it for the first semi. He gets it out to a loping, very tired Jim Steins on the outer wing. Oh, smothered by another giant in Ironmonger. And he tries to catch Robbie Flower. The tunnel ball doesn't come off. Rob Carter gets it now. Handball's off to Bolton. Bolton up towards half forward. Forward. No, not this time. Spalling was there. They're working it pretty well. Robert to Newport. Demons out of trouble. I got the ball on the half forward line. Bailey gives it across the, the running. Finally, good play, Varney. Unselfish again, always to a man in better position. It's Greg Healy this time. And he's capped it off. And there's about three or four swans with hands on knees, which is a sure sign that they've been thrashed. Three goals to Greg Healy. And Todd Viney here. Once more, just steps around his opponent, sets up with the hand pass. Melbourne have handled the ball very well considering the, the conditions. And Healy, who is noted as a sharp shooter, Swans were very keen to get him last year and they thought they may have had him up there uh, in the Sydney town joining his brother Jared. But uh, he elected to stay at Melbourne. They made him vice captain and uh, the heir apparent to uh, Robert Flower as the skipper of the Melbourne side. And maybe he's going to take over in the start of a great era for the Melbourne club. Well, I wonder if all this, though, might eventually persuade Flower to continue. Perhaps the next couple of weeks might tell. He might go out with a premiership. 69-point lead to the Demons, and the MCG is an exciting place to be with the Demons on fire. The Swans in attack, but Danny Hughes in the way. Melbourne have only been in the finals 26 times in their history and yet have won 12 premierships. Been a lot of discussion during the week about the advantage playing on the Melbourne cricket ground gives them. They certainly seem to rise to it. Next week they've got to go to Waverley and that might be a different story against the might of the Hawks. Swans into attack, but not for long. Love it, Stretch, who is everywhere. Stretching himself to the limit, but kicking badly this time. Straight into the arms of... Carroll, Holden, oh, Bayes, very sloppy, lazy, and with not a great deal of effort at all. Yates to Coop, and now Melbourne in trouble. But they fight their way out of it, which Bayes didn't do a moment ago. Yates back to the centre, and this time a more concerted effort from Bayes. Carter to Scott, on his preferred kicking boot, but doesn't place it. And Sean White, who is loved at this Melbourne cricket ground, is in the way. Well, Sean White's been a great defender. So has Brett Lovett, who's been absolutely fantastic on the halfback flank. White's kick. He looks very athletic this season. Finds the arms of his uh, Carl Island Gaelic football companion in Jim Steins. And that was quite a good mark with a wet ball. The kick's dropping a little bit short on the half volley uh, towards Dean, and Carroll gives him a little shove, and Carroll goes through, loses the ball. It's pinched by Bailey. Have another try. It's holding this time. White again. What a game he's played. And as uh, Kevin Bartlett already mentioned, love it as well. That's his sixth mark in a day, or on a day, which has rained just about for the four quarters. His kick's not good, almost knocked Bolt over, and like a racehorse, he bounds away quickly. Ball with a chance, uh, couldn't come to him. The Melbourne players move into that critical front position. Steve Stretch can do no wrong. A lovely left foot kick down to Bailey. He gets a call over the top from Healy. Another one down to Viney Healy. It's a relay free kick or play on anyway. This time it's Dean. The kick 
Campbell. Not that time. Mark just about everything that's come his way. And umpire Howlett having to intervene in a bit of a skirmish as Brian Wilson watches from the bench where he sat for most of the day after copping one in the face early. And umpire Howlett really with an animated expression there as he lets Brett Bailey know that he doesn't want him to uh, continue these actions as Mitchell kicks and Carroll marks at halfback for the Swans. A frustrated skipper who lined up at full forward, kicked a couple of goals, but his side has been swamped. Steins, who's getting better and better, becoming more and more accomplished. Ironmonger, Cordy. But how do you get away from these demons? Yates, whistle, Melbourne free kick. And Graham Yates, or David Williams, in fact, to take it. And he'll kick from outside 50 metres. Oh, the ball thrown away, which might have just about brought him to within 50. And there's the reason for the free. The umpire ruling that Cordy was caught in possession and didn't get rid of the ball in time. Williams from 55. Might have made it. He has made it. The Demons get their 21st. They lead by 75 points. Last week, it was 118 in the elimination final. I don't think they'll creep into three figures this week in the winning margin stakes, but it has been another astonishing performance. Well, and Robbie Fowler for the second uh, week in a row has been brought up by John Norby to a standing ovation. And, of course, he's, uh, he's done that so that he can give Flower a rest and make sure he's there next week. Standing ovation it is. And there seems to be an awful lot of red and blue colours at the MCG this afternoon, no matter what pocket you look at. And it's not imagination. Always in control. Williams. Dean. Handle the football a lot this afternoon. Dean. Almost to Campbell. Breakaway here by Murphy. In the middle, it's Bays. Bays has a long run now. He's a long kick. He might go for that shot, but there's a demon there. He'll get it. He got it and lost, and it's Hughes. Backed up well by the reliable Sean White, and a very well-directed kick down there to uh, stretch. And the demons playing uh, premiership football. Handball off. Love it. Beautifully placed kick. Todd Viney with Roberts. The man in the middle. They're running and they're getting to position easily. It's Yates. And running further down is Spalding. No one after him. Plenty of time to make mistakes and still recover. The kick wasn't good. Right in the lap of the Swans' Carroll. Yeah, and just a little bit of sloppiness, but couldn't really blame the Demons for just making an error or two that hardly made one all day. Holden just bounced inside, then over for a throw in on the wing. Almost 23 minutes gone, and Robbie Flower for the second week in a row watches the dying moments from the interchange bench. And they've been two magic moments as Flower has left the ground to a standing ovation. And this 1987 season, which he's declared to be his last, must have just exceeded all his expectations. And satisfied Demon fans out there. It's Bays over the top of the two big ruckmen. Campbell. Sean White. Steve Stretch almost brought off one of the best marks of this match and still in possession and clever play. Unselfish to a man in better position. Anyone would be in the key was at that stage but here's Steve uh, right for the Swans a trier across to Murphy Browning gets by himself but the ball skids past him great effort by White still in still in yes and it's not there he, he didn't give Browning a chance to put it back he charged at it like a bull of a gate Just look at this endeavour <laughs> 
29 minutes gone. Bay is the big leap. Danny Hughes kicks to the centre to some open territory. And first there is Brett Bailey. Well met, though, by Jared Healy, but well played Bailey and Cordy for the Swans. Bolton now, forward of the centre. Under clear sky for a change to full forward. Hughes. The 75,000 or so of the 80,200 who came today that are still here rise to salute the demons. This has been a Fox Footy production. A proud member of the Fox Sports family.